pulse oximetry is used to evaluate the oxygenation of our neonatal patients. It gives us a good baseline value so that if we were to compare it to an arterial blood gas or if we were comparing it to a capillary blood gas, then we would be able to evaluate the appropriate oxygenation status for our patients. From a position standpoint, we have a couple of areas where we could place our probe. What you see right now is the traditional oximeter probe that we would place on our adult patients. Previously, we did learn that we place this on the patient's finger or their toes. But for our neonatal patients, as we can see that our probe is too large to place on their delicate fingers or toes. So therefore, we have a different type of oximeter probe that we use. With this one, it actually appears to be somewhat like a Band-Aid. As you can see, the words SPO2 are on top. And for that particular site, we place that directly on the pulse. Remember, on the bridge of our foot is the dorsalis pedis artery. And so that's why we place it there. Aside from the baby's foot, we also know that we can place these types of probes on their wrist, their palms, around the ankle, the ball of the foot, or for our larger infants, we could actually place the oximeter probe on their fingers or their toes. The main thing is that we put it in an area of adequate perfusion and also we have to make sure that the probe fits. As I pan over to our oximeter, neonatal values for heart rate as well as saturation vary. You should have a chart that was posted on Blackboard with what these normal values or normal ranges could be. Initially when you turn on the pulse oximeter you do want to let it go through its self-test and then you want to make the necessary adjustments as far as the alarm limits go. So as I demonstrate I shall turn on the pulse ox. The screen goes through its self-test making sure that all the values are where they should be. Now some pulse oximeters require that you change them from adult mode to neonatal mode. With this one you don't have that as an option but what you do have to take into consideration are the alarms. The way that you set your alarms accordingly we press the alarm button, press and hold, Let me cycle back through. So we have our high alarm. This is our high saturation alarm. This is our low saturation alarm. How do you know it's low? The corresponding number that you see here is in the window and the high or low will be displayed on bottom for the saturation. For the heart rate, high or low will be here, and then the number will be here. So let's cycle back through that. Low saturation, high saturation, low heart rate, and high heart rate. So that being that you're using neonatal patients, just make sure that you do set the alarms appropriately. Once those alarms have been entered in, Without touching the pulse oximeter, it reverts back to the normal screen, or you can press the enter button to accept whatever changes you make. If you have to make changes, let's access the alarms again. Let's say I want to adjust my saturation alarm. Well, you just press the corresponding arrow, may it be down or up, and then press the enter button. 
It then cycles through the remaining alarms. So this would be my heart rate alarm. This is my high heart rate alarm. Once I'm satisfied, I can press the enter button or I can just leave the machine as is and it will automatically revert back to these settings. So that is the pulse oximeter. From an indication standpoint, if our patient is suspected of having hypoxemia, definitely we're going to use a pulse oximeter. Also, if we're going to monitor the adequacy of any type of arterial saturation um, that we normally would compare to the oxyhemoglobin curve or the oxygen dissociation curve, then we would use a pulse oximeter for that. Some of the factors that adversely affect the pulse oximeter readings would include, of course, the ambient light, uh, any type of motion, which is very key. It's key in our neonatal patients because babies, when they're sleeping, uh, sometimes they still move around those little hands and, and feet. So motion artifact is something that we have to take into consideration. Also, if the baby has abnormal hemoglobin, uh, and we will talk about hemoglobin and its affinity uh, when we talk about the O2 disassociation curve, how that could adversely affect the readings that you will see. Also, if the baby has um, some type of hyperoxemia uh, that is present, or in the case of hyperbilirubinemia, in which the patient may uh, have an association of jaundice with that, then that also could affect the readings that we would see. From a range standpoint, Similar to that of our COPD patients, we are mindful that the ranges that we would see or expect to see vary according to our baby. If the baby is premature, then their saturation should be between 85 to 92 percent. That would be normal. If the baby is premature, their saturation should be roughly 85 to 92 percent. If the patient is term, then we would expect to see a saturation of 90 to 100 percent. Heart rate wise, we would have to set the heart rate accordingly uh, to what our patient's heart rate, our patient's baseline heart rate is. So that is pulse oximetry. Very easy, uh, very similar to what we would expect to see in the adult world with just a few modifications.